Hey, it's time for Voice Over Body Shop. One more time. Believe it or not. And uh, George and I are just going to talk about the last 13 years, essentially. A little reminiscing. Yeah. A little bit of sharing some of the fun show art. You know, the YouTube thumbnails that Dan's been making all these years <laughs> on his own. Yeah. You guys may not know that he makes them all himself. So he'll talk. He'll be showing some highlights and how he does it. Yeah, and we have a, a very special announcement that everybody's gonna love. I think you're gonna love our little our little fun new feature that we've built on the website, and which we'll be demonstrating tonight. So That's stick right. Stick around for that. That's right. And if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room. Depending gonna, on where you are, we're gonna answer. Them. We are. You know, we're on Facebook. We're on we, our YouTube. How and, long are we running tonight? And, until we're done. <laughs> hour and a half. No, she Sue only has an hour. So we're having a hard out. I can keep running the show if you got to walk out of here. Yeah. Anyway, time for voiceover body shop. One more time. Now. Voiceover body shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hi there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver... Body Shop. Or VO... BS! So... Back in before Thanksgiving, in the before time, no, in the yeah, not the before times, the, yeah, no, it was sometime the, last year. Now it's in the after times, right? Um, what happened? Well, we, we decided we were going to take some time off, mm -hmm. and uh, we we prescribed it. Yes, we we said okay, well, the, the holidays are coming up. Everything is is just a mess, and let's let's just take it easy for let's for take a, a beat let's maybe reframe the show we were let's talking about give it a makeover right we wanted to talk about podcasting more a little podcasting. bit more podcasting yeah exactly and then uh the week where we would normally do the show came along mm -hmm. and i'm like nah, i'm not into it right now uh -huh. <laughs> after after a bit of a vacation and you then, started realizing that you didn't mind missing the I, uh, well, I, the, the, the responsibility right i mean, the show. my sunday mornings were very busy you yeah, because we would get up, we'll watch the Sunday morning talk shows, and yeah. I would sit there and I would put yeah, out the that's banners, when you were doing a lot of them, and yeah. and promoting the show and stuff. And I want to really enjoy my coffee on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. and, and you know, and because just the way things were lined up, yep. I'm like I've had enough. Yep, you mm -hmm. know, I we we've been doing this show since two thousand March twenty second, twenty eleven. Holy cow! So we just passed that magic 13, thirteen years. Years, yeah. So. You know, it was. How did we get the thumbs up on screen? Is that a new Facebook feature? I, yes. Or a new Mac, no, feature? It's on Mac feature? Oh, you must have Sonoma. Oh, maybe not have Sonoma. I, well, maybe Snow. Who knows what's on there? <laughs> I don't know. I turn on the computer and it's there in the morning and it, and it works. Zoom feature, you have to say something upbeat. There oh. you go. Yeah. This is great. You can get fireworks. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it, it just turned out that I'm like, I'm, I, the thought was, is I was like ready to retire. I was about to turn 67. There was lots of stuff going on. If you read our, our, our message in, in Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, about what was going on and, and, and there was a lot of surgery between now and then. Uh, and, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I had back surgery 10 days ago. I would show you my scar, but that would really be showing off. Yeah. Don't That's, need the last thing you want to see is my tochus on the air here. So, uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, I, I, I can't lift things, Yeah. but I can walk standing up straight, Yeah. That's which huge. I have not done for, for years. I mean, yeah. everybody thought I was, I was Groucho Marx that way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but now I'm like walking straight. I mean, the next, amazing. I was walking around the block the next day. It's amazing that's, that's what incredible. they did. Incredible. Yeah. I mean, they had to take a big piece of my, you know, one yeah. of my, 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 uh, vertebrae out, yeah. scrape off all the, 
you know, the arthritis mm -hmm. that's in there from yeah. all those years of playing hockey and, and, and yeah. sitting like this. The irony that being <laughs> active all your life made you almost completely inactive. Right, right. You know, and because of that, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't yeah. play golf. I want to learn how to play pickleball, although I'm really late to the party. Uh, <laughs> so you got to wait till it gets cool again. Yeah, yeah. Maybe so, like 75, 80 when you're in the retirement community. I, I'm in a retirement community. We're playing banana tennis. <laughs> banana tennis? Oh, I thought we were doing pickleball. What are you? Uh, you no. Know, yeah. I'm trying to say something funny here. Yeah, yeah the, the pickleball is what we used to play street hockey with. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. So now they're like, well, why don't we just play tennis with it? And now every commercial you see people playing, pick nobody's playing tennis anymore. They're all playing. Actually, I have a funny story about that. So in the Atlanta, I was hanging out with some voice actors, some yeah. young, young voice actors. And one of them told me that she was looking for an apartment, but there's a, a pickleball court. But it had no, <laughs> the problem was, is that it did have a pickleball court oh, and the honey. damn things are noisy. It's like, dunk, 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 you know? <laughs> and she's like. So she was, she was, she literally said, I'm running outside. I'm so sorry for not having your name at the top of my mind right now. I'm going to look you up because this is, it's a great story. But, um, she, she ran out, she, she went and she's like, I'm going to look at my apartment now. And they're like, okay. She's like, well, I'm going to go in my, I'm going to go in there and shut the door and just see what I hear. You know, she's like, well, wouldn't you know it when I was in there, there was no pickleball going on. So <laughs> I came back another time prepared and she said, I came back, put a microphone in the room, brought her equipment, set it up in the apartment, hit record, ran out to the pickleball court yeah. and started hitting the pickleball Just on to the see court what it sound like. and ran back <laughs> upstairs. <laughs> I was like, that is freaking genius. Yeah. But that's what we do. Like when we evaluate people's home studios for noise issues, we tell you to put up your mic. Right. Record the environment. What do we hear? What are we going to have to fix? Yeah. Right. Yeah. What, it's what, hilarious. Why don't we go back and really talk about why we started this show? Yeah. And some of the exciting things that led up to it. <laughs> that was back in 2011 when the world was a very different place. Uh, mm -hmm. But George and I met at at a voice conference. Uh, because you were brought in as a replacement for somebody who had been deported. So everybody knows who I'm talking about. Uh, and, uh, you, you had a slide presentation on PowerPoint yep. that was just a little over the a top. A little bit <laughs> too TMI. Right. There was just too much information in this slide. Show. Right. And I was responsible for producing that room at that particular mm -hmm. conference. And I'm watching these slides. And I'm like, oh my God, he is going to go way over people's heads. You could tell you, you knew this it, was way off target. Right. Because we do the same thing. We help people with home studios. This right. was even back in, I started doing this about 2005, 2006. And I run I'm like, hey, listen, this is way over, over your head or over everybody's head. Let's go through these slides and let's take a few out. Yes. And we took about two thirds of them out. As I recall, I said, you do this. They're going to be kissing your feet at the end of this. Well, th this, <laughs> this, this slide right here, I'm going to show you guys if I can. This was the first. <laughs> slide i was going to show everybody as this is what you should have in your studio so no guarantees i can actually get this on the show but i'm going to try but um if i go to share and stop screen and share screen again and present it has to be within chrome doesn't it I, can you share other apps i have no idea i'll just share my whole screen okay let's just go. let it go let's just let her rip all right chaos ensues Dumb. here we go this okay. is what oh, i was going to yeah. show to the students who I didn't know. I mean, the first 10 voice actors I probably set up were all promo people. Right. With ISDN right. and all this crap. So I was like, this is what you need in your home studio. Dan, Dan's like, no! oh my God, no. <laughs> in fact, I still use the slide as sort of a joke. Yeah. You know, like I'll show this as the first slide. Like <laughs> at the Atlanta, I did the mic to MP3, which is really kind of like everything I know about recording, you know, right. within reason. And the first thing I would show is this one, you know, and I'd just be like, just kidding. You yeah, know? Pe people sitting in the audience going, <laughs> yeah, they're just a tad intimidating. Very intimidating. We, we can cut out about five or six things that are on that, in that picture. That Dan, we, Dan, uh, Dan talked, Dan talked me down real life. And he's like, <laughs> here, here's, look at this. Well, look at this that. There's, the, there's heavy George. This is slide one of that thing. And here was, here's all the stuff we're going to talk about. And 
it was uh it was gonna go off the rails quickly and dan and dan reeled me back in and i'm so <laughs> glad that you did dan yeah. yes and we became fast friends after that yeah because i also remember you were you were promoting that that mobile system you know, yeah vo to go vo to go yeah and i was pretty impressed with that yeah and we stayed in touch and we did a couple of podcasts together mm -hmm. and th then we decided you know, let's do this as, as as an actual podcast, but let's see. I can't remember why we decided to do it on camera. Oh, so we, we could demonstrate stuff. Right. And well, uh, no, it wasn't even that. We decided to do it on camera from my perspective because I couldn't find a way to do live shows that didn't have a video attached. Right. right. There was no platform that I could find that was a simple. We used Ustream. Right. And there was nothing as easy as Ustream. Because we had to, a pay-per-viewer, too, which was... <laughs> yeah, there was nothing really as easy and straightforward as that, to just go live. Right. And I was like, well, I guess we'll just have a static picture of you and me on camera, or, or just sitting, like, there, and then that's it. And I was right. like, well, pff, we have a camera, let's just be on camera. Right. That was... <laughs> that was a huge mistake. Because <laughs> being on camera, live streaming video, is a big pain in the tuchus. <laughs> Which is tuchus, that, is you got to right? say that. Just a, more Tuch, phlegm. Tuchus. 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 There you tuchus. Go. A big pain in the tuchus. We have gone through more changes to how we produce this show. I mean, can you, let me see if I can remember all the the variations of how we've done our right. show. We did. Right? We did. Started with Ustream. Ustream. So that was me at my home on my la on a desktop computer with a very complicated mixer, which I didn't even need, but I had for some reason. You called it the Medusa. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and then whatever webcam I had, and then you on, in Buffalo, me and right. me in Santa Monica, you in Buffalo, and we would use Ustream, and right. we would go live, and we would actually we it was really complicated because we were taking calls from by Skype, right, right. right. So yeah. we were, or or was it some other way? We you and me were on Skype, right. That's how everybody was seeing us. Right. But then we were taking calls by pots like landline phone maybe it was by I, I think it was by Skype. I must have had another phone system. I think I had a second computer. I know, guys. Well, I'm sorry. It was 13 I think years I had ago. another computer that was dedicated to Skype duties. Right. And that and was you for the that. call ins. Right, right. right. And, and, and so we had that set up because we were trying to be car talk. We wanted to take calls. Right. Well, I mean, I, Dan's been in radio. I didn't know that the way these shows mostly work is it's 100% pre recorded. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't realize that, like, what they do and the magic of how car talk is so seamless and so well run is that it's all pre-taped. Right. And they can edit it. It's yeah. all and tightly they can say, edited. Oh, you're going to be calling at such and such a time. And, I yeah. thought like we were trying to get callers to call in at the right time. It was a, a nightmare to do. It was really hard. Right. <laughs> and then so pretty quickly we realized live call-ins wasn't going to be a right. thing. And then we had Pat Fraley on. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and 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 a few other people that we knew. Yeah, Bob Bergen was one of Bob our Bergen. And Pat was Pat was number one, right? Maybe Bob was number two. Yeah, and then uh, there were a bunch of other people we started bringing on as guests. Right? Yeah, but we but we at first we had Tom Kenny. Yeah, know. Tom Kenny was a heck of a get. Yeah, I gotta thank Tara Strong for that one because mm -hmm. Tara invited me to this. Um, it was like a fundraiser event for saving animals. Right. And she, Tom is a huge animal lover like Tara. And she invited me and she was like, it's going to be fun. If you want to come, Tom's going to be there. I'm like, oh, I'd love to get Tom on our show. Long story short, he, uh, I gave him my card. You know, when he, we, they were doing the, they had the lineup where people were having their stuff signed. Right, you know? right. And I said hi to him. I said, gave him my card. And he was super kind. And he was like, sure, I'll come on the show. Not only did he come on the show, he literally came into my house to be on the show in the flesh. Right. I mean, that was And that's when we used incredible. to do the show where you and I would talk tech for the first half hour. Yeah, we would, <laughs> no, hour. We, we would, you and I did tech for a yeah. solid hour. Yeah. And the guests had to just wait. Right. And we had two huge stars that right. did this, Tom yeah. Kenny. And June Foray. And June Foray. <laughs> Foray, foray, yeah, yeah. Very late in her life, but she was great. I mean, she was pushing a book at the time, and uh, you know, and I had the opportunity to go, "Hey, Rock, watch me pull a rabbit out of my sleeve." And she's like, "But that trick never works." It was, it was, it was fantastic. Amazing. She, she was, was the voice of Rocky, Rocky Squirrel. But uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. And, and and then we pe then people wanted to be on the show, so we got a lot of 
you know, the, the top people in the business. If you're looking for the Tom Kenny one, by the way, that was before VOBS. That was we were East West Audio Body Shop. That's right. So you're going to have to dig a little deeper to find that right. one. Right. Eventually, the chatbot's going to have everything from East West Audio Body Shop in it, too. Oh, good. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have literally everything we've ever done. It yeah. just takes more time to scrape it all. But right. anyway. Yeah. Well, we haven't told them about that yet, but we'll I get know, to I it. I know, I know. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, yeah. It's that decaf. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but it was it was fun, and it was, I mean, nobody else was doing it, and certainly nobody was doing it about voiceover. No, there wasn't really there wasn't a talk show. I don't remember there specifically being a podcast. There may have been a podcast out by that point. I don't, I don't really recall. Right. Um, but there certainly wasn't like a talk show, and there certainly wasn't like a show about just tech. Right. <laughs> we, we really thought we were going to do a, what two hours about tech. <laughs> I think that's what we initially thought. Yeah. And we realized that's just, yeah, it's just too much. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not only that, and we were doing it on a Sunday night. Yeah. We would do it that's live right, on a Sunday, Sunday night. night. Yeah. And I remember the missus getting really upset because I was, you know, and then in a spare bedroom upstairs oh, where yeah. my studio was and Jacob's room was right next to it. And oh. she got really upset because you're going to keep Jacob up. Going to keep him now, awake. When you consider he's now 27 years old. It gives you an idea. Yeah, that was timeline. Thirteen years ago. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, so the, it it caused tension. Yes. But some of the great, you know, we remember uh, my my uh, uh, ear, nose, but, and throat doctor. Yeah, doctor yeah. Joel Rhino, Bernstein. Auto, that's when I literally learned about what an auto rhinolaryngologist is. Right, and how to say it. That's right. And he's, <laughs> you know, I don't know, I don't know if Joel's still practicing. And that I, was quite a classic. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. we we were singing on there. We we. The thing, it was like the early days of television because it was. there were no well, rules. It was actually more like cable access. Well, yeah, it was. It really was. Um, <laughs> but we were we were doing it by 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 Skype, right? And and then we were capturing that, which was pretty new technology. Well, that was another classic moment, right? So there was an episode <laughs> where Skype died died on my computer. Like in my studio, I couldn't get Dan back on Skype. So I got Dan on Skype on my phone. I had it on my phone. So there's a whole 40, 30, 40 minute episode where I'm holding Dan in my hand and talking to Dan like this. Right. For the whole, and it's just his voice coming out of the speaker, getting picked up on my mic. And that's how we did the show. Right. Because the show must go the on. The show must go on. And it always did. <laughs> Yes. I mean, there were only a couple of times when it just, it went totally kabloom. I mean, they would, it I, would I can break up of every like, Well, yeah, I can think of maybe one show, one or two ever in our history where we just didn't go on the air that night. Right. I mean, maybe. I mean, we always got on the air one we, way or the other. That's right. Even if it was late, even if it was static or like freezing. Right. There is actually a lost episode. There is. But oh, there is. there's a couple of those. Actually. There's a lost episode. And I'm going to, this is a, I mean, you guys probably don't know. We did a whole episode with, you remember this guy? Say the name and then I'll remember the episode. <laughs> I'm trying to remember him now. This is, this, this, we're, we're talking Mark, like 500 shows. Mark Growl. Oh, yes. Oh, we the, did an entire, we tried to oh, do an entire live show from his studio. Studio, right. We were, tu we were touring people's studios. We were yeah. over at, at, uh, uh, Dave and Dave, and we were at Mark Voice Tracks Brown. West. We were at Voice Tracks West. Yeah. We were over at uh, at, at uh, the uh, the Soundbox LA. Yeah, at Tim Friedlanders. Yep, and we were doing remotes. We were just we had no idea what the heck. We didn't realize that the internet was going to be such a problem. We didn't right. realize that you can't walk down the hallway on a smartphone mm -hmm. and have it seamlessly stream audio from the catacombs of yeah. a giant building. Yeah. No, it was a total disaster. Yeah. It was so bad that we literally didn't air that one. Right. Maybe one of these days we should glue that one back together. Glue it back together or recreate it. Really? Because Mark is now, you know, he's not retired, but he's not in he's not in California anymore. Right. I know that much. So we the studio's we, still there. But. Studio's still there and kicking, yeah. yeah. But that was that was a, an example of things where where things went so poorly. Right. That we didn't even, I mean, because it was live. Right. If you were there that night watching it, like, you saw, well, you were the only ones that saw it. Right. and, and, <laughs> and it was a total mess. Right. And we had this saying, you know, it's, a, you know, East West Audio Body Shop. Every week, it's Apollo, Apollo 13. 13. <laughs> and then things stabilized a little bit. And yeah, then, for a while. Yeah. And, and <laughs> <laughs> Not for long. So then, so then, let me see, the next iteration of the show, after... 
it really kind of went pretty much the same way until you moved here. Right. Right. We may have moved from Ustream to something else. I think that's when we moved to Wirecast. Wirecast. Yeah. Wirecast was the sort of the pro version of Ustream, right? So we moved to Wirecast and, and then but things pretty much ran along and then Dan moved here. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where things got very interesting. Well, one, because you and I were always doing the show from opposite coasts. Yeah. That you was know, the, the east, the, there, west. Right. There, there was the one time when I just sort of showed up in your studio. Yeah. Because I was out here for, yeah, yeah. unfortunately, my stepfather had passed away right. and they, my mom lived in, in, in Orange and I came out and was like, yeah, Lee, the for it's, it's working, Lee. We see you. Yeah. He's in the chat. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and then suddenly I just walked in. I'm like, hey, we're together. Then there was the party we had at Angangooza's, our third year anniversary show, where we had probably about 20, 30 people in, in that huge apartment of hers. Yeah, and we were demonstrating studio suit. And, yeah, that was uh, great. That's that, another, that that's another classic. I'm realizing now a lot of these ones that we remember fondly were Ewabs episodes. Yeah, they were. Because we had... It we, was still... We were, we were fearless. Yeah. It's like, let's yeah. see if this works. Yeah, yeah. It and, was a different era. Yeah. yeah. And so, then, so, But that even that episode even was before you moved out here. That was when I decided to move that out. That was when you decided. Because Larry Hudson, who I know is out there, said, oh, you're going to love it out here if you come and move out here. This is... So I, I can get the missus reasons. to come out here. You had a lot of reasons to move out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, my son's at an animation school yeah. and, uh, you know, and this is the center of my universe. The business, the weather. You know, well, the, the, the weather. Yeah. Remember there was the one intro we had. Yep. I said, okay, go down on the beach and shovel some sand. With my kid. Yeah. Right. And then I had to wait for a snowstorm. Hey, and I went out into the driveway. And <laughs> so it was you flipping sand and then me going... Uh huh. And shuffling, <laughs> shuffling snow. That was a great intro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, so. you know what we should do is put on on the website. Just have an archive of like all the old stuff. Oh yeah, you know, like all the, just, old just the old intros, the old intros. Kind of like Mark Garau has a, a library of outtakes and stuff right, on his right. website. By the way, those are classic. It's yeah. Fix in the Mix, I think, is their website. Fix in the Mix dot com, and yeah. there's you have to go to the bloopers area. Right. There's some gold on there, man. Yeah. Shatner. You know, like, oh, um, yeah, that's that one's a legend. Like, uh, there's some really good stuff on there, yeah. anyway. Yeah, just a thumbs up. Yeah, now, one <laughs> of the things that I would do every Sunday morning, yeah, because we would shoot the show on, on Monday night, like we're doing right now, is I, I had to create a banner for Facebook and for the, the promos that we would send out to our right. mailing list and in various other places. Yep, uh, and there were a few that were my favorites, you know, and how did I do them? I would like. All right, I would just go and go, you know, Google two guys doing this or two guys playing baseball or two guys. And I would, and I would, uh, and I'd look at all these pictures and I'm like, okay, we'll try this one. And thankfully, this is way before generative AI art. Right. No, this right. was me using uh, key, uh, uh, Keynote. Keynote. And so you were using Keynote all these years yeah. to make those banners? Yes. That's awesome. Because I knew how to do it. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was easy. Well, let's look at some of those. Um, put that one. <laughs> this was this was fairly recent. I loved this one because the, I had a. You have to Dude. find the right pictures to go with it. You know, like the pictures of us. So I had to be looking this way, and you had, and I would go through Facebook and all the pictures that were taken. Because I don't remember. I, I this one slipped by me. I don't remember this one. This Isn't is the Beatles right on the one? roof shot. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's from let it be <laughs> it's fantastic you know and, and you know but there's things i had to fix you know i'm like okay i have to put the sky here but make it look like we're actually there no that there was, was the one was, i did with the wright brothers which some of them really it's, it's people have no idea how much work you put into yeah. it to make it look yeah, that show good. the next one uh and then jacob started drawing these characters of us yeah and Look how perfect that fit into those. Yeah. It was a no brainer. I think we did it with Yogi Bear and uh -huh. a couple other ones. Yeah. Yeah. What's the next one there, Sue? Oh, now, one of the things wow. that I, I have a, a real propensity for, and I, this really came out of, I think, a trip that Marcy and I took to, uh, to Eastern Europe. We were in Czechoslovakia. We went to the Museum of Communism, mm -hmm. which if you're ever in Prague, go to the Museum of Communism. It's... It's very revealing. It was, it was actually quite interesting. But I had this thing for Soviet propaganda art. Yeah. Because it's great stuff, even though it's like 
Big Brother is watching. Sure. And this one was, you know, two guys, one guy's holding like a, a sickle or something uh -huh. like that. Yeah. And, and then you had Lennon pointing uh -huh. like that. And I'm yeah. like, eh, let's see if this one works. And that one worked really well. <laughs> For some I mean, reason. you are quite a history buff, so that makes oh, sense. Oh, well, that absolutely. That. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, there's a great documentary on Netflix called um, Turning Point, The Bomb in the Cold War. Oh, yeah? Watch it. it. If you guys don't understand what's going on in the world right now, watch that. It's a great review of the, the Soviet Union and how Putin came to power and why we're in the mess we're it's in It's all today. just a little bit of history repeating. Exactly. Shirley Bassey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> can't remember the name of the group that did that. It's I Oh, keep... Propeller Heads. Propeller Heads, that's right. Boom, boom. Listen to that one. Shirley Bassey was the one who sang Goldfinger. That's right. Back Goldfinger. The... She but she that, sounds like... great still. Yeah, no, she can still 60 belt. years later. She's amazing. Yeah. What okay. was that next one? The next it was like an airplane. Yeah, airplane. I mean, yes. Heck yeah. Yeah, I, this, it was the, the 40th anniversary of See, airplane. was your mic on? Oh. Can be, yeah. We're you're on line you, one. There. You could be interstitially. Yeah, it sounded like it was just one, two, one, two. Pot it up. Well, one, my channel two, one. Two. Oh, it's on robot mode. Okay, never. Yeah, we'll it's turn, one of the it's one yeah. of the keypads on. Yeah, don't. Thing. Yeah, and make sure you turn that off before I have to do anything for. Uh, <laughs> Did you turn it on on purpose? No, she was just playing with it. No, I was. I didn't touch it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was like okay. I thought you were doing ne it on purpose. Never mind. <laughs> Anyway, this is an airplane, clearly. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's like, how do you, how do you, I had to find a picture. Which now you'll one, notice that's okay, the which, same picture of me and which Paul one McCartney. Am, yeah. Okay. Which, yeah, it is. That's right. Same angle, but flipped. Right. And, so, okay. So and actually which, it's the same picture of you. Am I, I flipped it the other that's way. That's right. Nicely done. Is that Striker? <laughs> no, that's Striker. Uh, Striker and, I'm striker. and Leslie Nielsen. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're the captain. And you're, Otto the auto You're over it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and auto the autopilot. Yeah. Right, I thought that was that would work. Now this was for the the uh, the interface sh uh, shootout we had. Oh yeah, so I'm like, okay, this I got to. This is still a good piece of uh, content. Yeah, for those that want oh, to yeah. their audio yeah. interfaces. Yeah, I mean, audio interfaces have changed a little You'll bit. Notice since we haven't then. done one since because it's a big pain in the neck. Yeah, really. <laughs> I mean, we had. I mean, I had to record all this stuff and then we had to chop it all together. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. We do this show live. And it made things a lot easier because mm -hmm. then we're just like, okay, I'm, you know, cut off the end and, you know, and then cut it into two shows. And yeah, doing the show live is a part of the secret sauce of how we can, we could maintain doing this over the, you would think doing it live makes things harder. Well, it, it does make certain things harder. I mean, right. like I said, I was getting into the point of how we've changed the way we, we do the show. And when Dan moved here, we had to rethink completely. Well, we have Pardon a studio me. to do. Yeah, we have a studio. We How do we have multiple? Look at this great set we have. Yeah, of I mean, course, <laughs> if we have multiple, if we have a studio, we need multiple cameras. Right. right. How are we going to have multiple cameras? How are we going to do that? We figured we, that out. <laughs> we, well, we, we, we had a, we, first we had a pretty good MacBook Pro that we right. thought was good it's enough. It's still but, sitting on the couch over there, dead battery and all. But was that before or after the Mac Pro? Mm -hmm. I think the Mac Pro was before the MacBook Pro. Yeah. And so they, we had a cheese grater MacBook, you know, the big tower Mac. Right. We had one of those. Right. And it was a beast. It was a 12 core right. monster that we got on eBay. And it still wasn't enough. No, because, well, then we had, well, then we had the PC, well, which I really refer to, to as the beast. We had to get the PC because it turned out that Wirecast, Doesn't which work. is what we were using. Doesn't work on a Mac. It was so unstable. It was terrible. We had, that was the re, that was the main reason this show became Apollo 13 was because of Wirecast. Right. We would have so many problems. Every other show, we would have to do troubleshooting to get things work. It was a nightmare, right? right. So then we're like, let's scrap it. So I, I was at NAB. I saw, I think it was Kirk Karnak yeah. doing, uh, doing live appearances from NAB. And I'm like, what are you guys running this on? What are you guys using? They're like, oh, it's vMix. I'm like, oh, vMix. Let's get vMix. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting on the whole vMix thing, right? And they're like, it's Windows only. I'm like, okay. All right. Well, uh, let's get a custom built PC. So then we had a custom built PC just to do vMix. Yeah. And that thrusted us back into PC world. And Sue had to learn the vmix interface with windows and it was it was quite a learning a learning curve and a half right but it was stable right vmix was way more stable and we did do the live show on vmix for a long time right and then then you discovered streamyard well we discovered streamyard because then we had the pandemic 
Oh, right. So uh, all and of then we sudden, had to do the show remote. We had to do the show remote. So at first it was remotely control. I was trying to get Sue to remote control the studio vMix computer <laughs> and then listen to the show via, I think it was Skype or was it Zoom? It was on Zoom. So yeah. Sue was list trying. That was the, that's how she was trying to hear what Dan and I were doing. <laughs> that was the IFB. So right. Sue could hear us live, even if we weren't on the air. Right. It was so complicated, right. and it did not work out well. Oh. It was just a train wreck and a half. Yeah. So that's when we discovered StreamYard. Right. Which and is then what using now. it changed everything. Right. Because super easy. Like if anybody, while while I have my gripes about StreamYard, it does weird things like why Dan and I were jiggling up and down before, and I don't I don't know. Why. But anyway, it's super easy. It's still doing it, but <laughs> is it doing it now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird software. It's all based on the web. It's on right. Chrome. But in terms of you want to get a live show out in the air with the least amount of absolute headache and frustration, yeah. it's probably StreamYard. It's and it's getting better all the time. It's got more features. But that's yeah. and that's yeah, now five years, four years running. Yeah. StreamYard. Yeah. So now you're all probably, you know, we're we're just shooting the poop here about well, this is, thing that's know, going on. Memory but lane. We, it's it's the top of the hour here. It's like eleven. Yeah, it's it's like eleven o'clock in New York. Holy cow! In North Carolina. Oh, that's right. We've only been on. We've only been on for a half hour. That's right. Okay. So we. It's. Uh, <laughs> I guess it's time for the big announcement. Should we? Because you guys are like, what? What are you guys going to talk? About? What is it? What is it? Well, you know, when we decided to stop doing the show, we were thinking, well, how do we, how do we promote the stuff that we have? We've got so many hours of material. That's the thing. There yeah. is so much useful evergreen content any question you would ever have about voiceover was probably answered on this show by all the guests we've had on all the you know you know the, the coaches and producers and uh, if you look at 13 nearly 13 years all right yeah. let's say an average of an hour per episode because they were split in well half. well there was an hour well, and a half for, originally for a really long time it was a full hour and a half right, right. Well, mostly because the guest would continue to talk, and I'm like, okay, how do we get him to stop? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, the shows were literally each Monday right. nearly two hours. Right. Do you remember? I yeah, mean, I'll, I'll, so. I'll never forget it. <laughs> so, so you add all that together, and then when we split the show into Tech Talk, I mean, it's got to be like over a thousand hours of content, maybe a lot more. If you that. include eWebs, easily. Yeah, because we did over 300 that. shows as eWebs. Yeah. And then we, we did like 250 shows with a guest. Yep. And we did 114 tech talks. Yeah, 140 so you, you, you do the math. Yeah. I mean, it, that's how many hours it's an of material. insane amount of useful content. Right. So then it was like, how do we make this usable and consumable in as going on as the right. show goes on? And then so, give me my Sunday mornings. Back. Right. So if you go on like Google or if you go on YouTube and you search for things, you can get lucky and find like an episode where something was brought up or somebody right. was a guest, but beyond that, you don't get much more useful information. And then you got to comb through the episode, right. find what you're looking well, for. Well, I remember Jack DeGolia used to, he kept a transcript of what we were doing. In the good old days, yeah. we would actually have a live human doing show notes. Well, I'll I'm bet sure. you Jack's watching too. But uh. <laughs> We really did. And so we decided that um, there needs to be a better way to find stuff. I mean- even for my own personal use, right. I would be frustrated. I would see things on Facebook, people talking about a certain topic. I'd be like, oh my gosh, we talked about this ad nauseum on our show. Right. If I could only find what's the poignant thing that we said or the moment in the show where we said, anyway, we yeah. found a way. And you found a way. <laughs> because I don't understand any of this stuff. We found a way. You kids and your your AI and And we found a way and it looks and it looks something a little bit like this uh, right here. <laughs> this is our this is our new AI. Now it's I'm already logged in, so it's not letting me show the screen blank the way it would normally show it. But you can see John's eye peering through. <laughs> This is now how we, uh, you can find everything we've ever talked about on the show. This is our AI, Dan and George. Yeah. And so we've built a chat bot. It, this is now how you can access all these years of content. Everything that's ever been said on the show, every guest, 
every topic, and every we've question, about everything, every question, like you guys have ever asked, everything that's been spoken on this show, thanks to, let's face it, excuse me, modern technology, machine learning, AI, this is all findable now. Right. And so we, we use the service that allows us to, well, it's not a secret because it literally says on the bottom of the website <laughs> what it is. Yeah. Powered by customgpt.ai. We use, I found a thing called customgpt.ai while I was sick in bed with COVID the first week of the year. And we were able to use this tool set to scrape and get site maps and find as much useful information that Dan and I have spoken online as possible, ingest it into this thing and create this tool. And it is... All you have to do is ask it a question. It is awesome. And here's a few things. If you guys have done anything with AI type tools, you're probably quite accustomed to the fact that they hallucinate. Yes. This has been... It, it makes up stuff. This has been a rather controversial part of any chat bot, chat GPT type tool set, right? What's so cool about um, this chatbot system is it doesn't hallucinate. If what you're searching for is not definitively locatable, it's not going to make it up. The language model, it right. doesn't make it up. So, for example, I typed in the question a little bit earlier um, Are there any episodes where Sue Molino was seen on camera? Well, that may have happened at some point, but however, because probably we never said her name, Sue Merlino, right. or something like that, the, the, the database of everything we've ever said doesn't know where that is. So it says, sorry, we don't have an answer. We recommend getting help from Dan and George or go to the website or, you know, we'll help you somehow, you know. Right. So it won't make up an answer. Right. But it, it comes up with all kinds of good stuff. Right. And the better your question, the better the answer. Right. Like you can throw at it tons of details and it will formulate some pretty useful stuff. So I, if you guys have some good questions in the chat, I will start throwing them in there and you guys can search it and see what it comes up with and right. see. So give me some good questions while Dan thinks of something useful to say. Well, I mean, we, it, it's easy to find this because we put it on all of our websites. It's on, of course, VOBS.TV. Yes, it's at if, the very top. If you look at, you look right I above us, if you're watching on our, on our website, it says, you what can't does it say? It. Yeah, the, the, the chatbot thing. You <laughs> click on that, it'll take you to the chatbot. It literally says, the best shop talk in voiceover is now in chatbot, chatbot form. form. And then right. right below in yellow, it says, introducing AI Dan and George chatbot. Click here to learn more. So the if way you, it works. If you click on that. If you click on that, it's going to take you to Yes, it's going to take you to a paywall. <laughs> so um, at the moment, it's priced at twenty bucks. We think maybe that's a an little introductory bit steep. Price, an introductory price of ten dollars. We're going to drop it down to ten bucks a month. And so what happens is once you log into this thing, you got to put in your credit card info. But what it's going to do is it's going to it's going to give you fourteen days, two weeks, to hammer on this thing and play around with it and see if it's actually useful for you and what you're doing and what you're learning. And if it is, then it will start billing your card. You guys know how free trial subscription stuff works. It works like pretty much all the other cancel stuff at any thing. time. But why right. would you want to? Right. So, so we're gonna we're gonna adjust the price. Maybe we'll take a break later, and I'll fix the price. And um, and you guys can start playing around with it. But we we are really proud of this. It's it's the way to get information we never thought possible. It's and every question that you could possibly have about voiceover. I mean, performance, covered. you know, improv, every tech question we've ever covered. Uh, you know, but, by the way, we'd like to have your questions because George and I would still like to do what we do best, which is answer your questions. Yeah, uh, well, just, we're actually kind of working on a question from Justin because Justin Ramos answer said, uh, Dan, can you tell us your daily VO routine compared to when you first started? As compared to now, you know, like checking emails, auditioning, checking P2Ps. And then a question for me from Eldorado to GTT, what, is, what, have you, what have you done about your routines? Holy cow, that's a whole show. It and is. One question. Well, I can. I can Do you want to get to, the, sure. you want to, get to that one right sure, now? Sure, yeah. What, right. what's, what's my routine like? Well, let's see. I get up at 7.20 every morning, then stay in bed till about 8.20. Yeah. I'm retired. You know, I, 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 I'm collecting my social security I don't have to answer to anybody except 
except the missus. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> and and Mishka, and sometimes Jacob. Mm. Mishka's the dog. Uh, and uh, but I will come out here after breakfast because this is a separate studio. This is garage. This was the great thing about this place when we bought yep. it. It was a recording studio. The first, mm-hmm. you know, when we when we first bought the place, and so we, George and I worked it to reconvert it into a voiceover studio and a television studio, which is why we look so darn good on here. We got lights, we got everything is, you know, of course there was all the cable that was in here, <laughs> which is now sitting in a closet. It's enough to support, you know, you know, a tank hanging <laughs> from it. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, I, I'll, I'll go check my, my email. Uh, but when I first started, it was, yeah, it was a lot of going to the PDPs, uh, and looking for auditions and firing those out. And was there a point where you just decided I don't need to deal with the PDPs anymore? Uh, yeah. About four or five years ago. Well, when one of them really went south with how they were managing things, mm-hmm. I remember actually going to their office and saying, you can't do this as were a lot of other people. Yep. And I came home and I immediately took myself off of that one. I was on the other one that had a numerical name to it. We're not saying the names because we don't want to come up in AI search. Right. But exactly. Anybody that's been watching our show or know has dipped about. a toe in the voiceover right. business knows we're talking right. about. And I built my business on, on those. Right. You know, the one was very good before they decided to change their management uh, plan. Uh, and they changed uh, their priorities. They, they really, that's did. what it was. It, it suddenly we were no longer their customers. We were their commodity. Yeah. And yeah. I, I didn't like yeah. that very much. Right. Uh, but I built a good solid clientele from that. Uh, and I had a couple of big contracts with, uh, a couple of companies that were constantly sending me stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, and then I started doing stuff like I became president of a local <laughs> board <laughs> which I'll never recommend uh, because what, what do they say? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and, 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 and no, no good deed goes un, unpunished. unpunished There's yeah. a lot of that. Uh, and I became very philanthropic and mm-hmm. started doing that. That started to take away from my time from doing voiceover. Then for some reason we started doing this about a couple of years later and that took up time, but we were doing the show to promote the fact that we were consulting with people on home voiceover studios. And a lot of people were getting into the business and they needed assistance with that. I spent about 50% of my time doing voiceover and 50% of my time helping people with their yeah. home studio mm-hmm. and 50% of my time taking care of my dogs. And 50% uh, of your time being a dad. That's right. And 50% of your dad being a time being a husband. Right, right. So... <laughs> Now, now yeah. I get to do all that stuff actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and today, you know, it's, it's pretty easy because my clients send me stuff. They've been doing it for years. And, I count on you. Right. And you're, you're a trusted voice. Right. And, and people keep sending me stuff through my specimen collection cup on mm-hmm. my, my, my webpage. And it's, you know, it's a nice leisurely life out here in Southern California where the sun Good. is shining except for this winter. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, you know, it's not bad. And because it's so relaxing, I, I don't need the stress of trying to put this together every week. Right. You know, getting a guest and, and, you know, that sort of thing. So I got, not that I didn't like doing it. I just got tired of doing that when there are other things in my life I needed to be doing. Yeah. Like looking after my family Mm -hmm. and, you know, make up for all the time that, you know, perhaps I was maybe not paying as much attention to them as I needed. Sure. Because this is a place, great place to come out and hide. Yes. Yes. More than anything. Well, I, I and, never, and you all know what I'm talking about. I never had that place to hide in my house growing with my <laughs> daughter growing up. And, uh, my daughter, my daughter, when she was able to, when she was at the age of being able to run and walk was disruptive. Um, uh, I don't know. If and you she would, would always run and walk onto the show. As I don't recall. Yeah, she would love to stick her head on the show. Do you ever remember hearing her banging on the door to my oh, office? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Very loudly. Like, I mean, like a kick drum. Boom, 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 you know, like a monster. <laughs> so my kid was very disruptive. So, I mean, things have not, in terms of my business and what I do, things really have not changed. Uh, I still don't do voiceover. As crazy and stupid as that sounds, the more I say it to myself. <laughs> I never I never dipped my toe in the voiceover business. 
Um, I still run my business full time. There was a distracted moment where I just <laughs> decided to join another company. Mm -hmm. From 2013 we, to we won't mention any 2017, names. I joined another company because I was, you know, I was tired of running my own business because it's freaking exhausting sometimes yeah, and stressful. Is. And um, so that was a little distraction. But for, but since then, you know, that was before I joined that company, I was Eldorado Recording Services. I met my buddy Graham Spicer, who helped me do a remake of my company, a rebrand. We moved, we changed to VO Studio Tech. Graham and I joined this company. We worked there together for four years. Then we both were asked to leave and we did, and we went off to do new things. And that's when I started George the Tech. I had to come up with a new brand. I had to come up with everything literally in one night. And that's what I did. Sometimes inspiration hits. I was, you got to go was, for it. I was kicked out the plane and I built another plane from spare parts that I had still strapped onto me as I plummeted <laughs> to earth. <laughs> Managed to not crash into the ground and then fix the plane. And the plane's gotten a little bit better now with our latest iteration of George the dot tech, the new website, which launched a year ago now, um, has been quite a journey and quite, quite a process, but it's the first time we built something from scratch from the ground up. And it's been a huge amount of work, yeah. a huge amount of work. It's probably, I spend not so much now, but for at least six months to eight months, it was probably a quarter of my time was like, just keep getting the website where you see it now and, and improving it. And, and now it's coming up with services that meet more people's needs and then building a team. That's especially since the new site it's came quite out. A, quite a list of people you got working with you. It's now. been a huge part of our, a huge priority was, was to, to have more, more people that have more specialties. Not only am I just one person, I just didn't want to continue trying to pretend that I'm an expert at everything. Right. I'm just not, I'm not an expert at everything. I'm not an expert at Studio One. I'm not an expert at Logic. I'm not an expert at Pro Tools. I can get around in these things. I'm okay in Reaper. Which is I'm, why we tell people not to use those things. <laughs> there's a <re> <laughs> it makes you know, it a lot easier. <laughs> you know, some people end up getting training from somebody who's an expert at one thing. You know, like there's a guy for Studio One. There's there's schools that still teach Pro Tools to brand new voice actors. Don't understand that at all. But anyway, keep it simple, kids. I don't want to learn everything new, and I don't want to convince people that they need to learn these crazy new things. So my job is to be the advocate for the voice actor. Always really has been finding the right tools, things that are easy, reliable, and efficient. That's really my thing. And, and that's what I still do at, as George the Tech. Right. Um, just trying to stay relevant. And I guess the only thing that's really, really new, other than the chatbot experiment, is um, I've just decided that while I was at VO Atlanta, it would be a good time to launch a new membership. So we actually have a membership program now. Now I've offered this for years, yeah. but only to under the radar. Yeah. Not like online, just, <laughs> you know, a client of mine that's really busy. I'm like, you know, I, you, you're hiring me a lot. Let's work something out. So I do have a number of VIP clients who I see on a regular basis or help them. Well, now it really it's open to everybody now. Mm. So if you're interested in getting like a more of a flat rate type support, you can do that um, on georgethe.tech. You'll yeah. see a menu item for memberships and see what you think. See if there's something there that's useful to you. We have bi-monthly meetings where we just talk tech. It's ask me anything. You can get uh, access to sound checks, which is your sp specimen collection cup, and unlimited access to the chatbot which we're going to demonstrate here in a little bit. Actually, yeah. I have a question for our, right. for the VOBS chatbot. Yeah. I, I also forgot that I became president of World Voice. Oh, you forgot <laughs> yeah, that little thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's also taking up a lot of time right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my, my term is up in October. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, we, I, I decided to take the organization. And it, it, the times have changed. And what we originally came up with I don't think it was really re as relevant today as mm -hmm. it was back in 2012 when we started it. Yeah. And, uh, so we're really marketing our, our, our searchable directory of our professional members voiceover.biz. Yeah. Uh, and we're promoting it to the people who hire us and they are hiring people from there. So if you join that's Wovo great. as a professional member, if you qualify, you mm -hmm. can be on there. And that's like, 
you know, is it a pay to play? Well, it's $99 a year to be a member of the organization, but we got other stuff. We've got our demo player. It's a very minimal cost. Really. Yeah. Uh, you know, for a professional organization. Absolutely. Yeah. I pay more than that for every other organization I'm a part of. Yeah. And, and then we've got, uh, and Wovocon, mm -hmm. which is, which is going to be more like FAFCON this year in Chicago. Which now, is going to be great. a bunch of you know what FAFCON yeah. is. In a nutshell, explain the FAFCON. FAFCON uh, is an unconference uh, where it's not where you bring in lots of big speakers to attract people. It's members helping members essentially, uh, and and expert you know people who everybody's got some sort of expertise in something. Uh, and their voiceover. Some people are really good at accounting. Some people are really good at marketing. Some people happen to be fairly good at home studio stuff. You know, until they, they don't know. And then they ask you and me about it. Uh, and then, or somebody else who's going to give them some long, complicated answer. And, uh, but we have, you know, we've got videos on stuff. We have, you know, distinguished speaker series. We've got webinars, uh, you know, that sort of thing. But the FAFCON model was people would get together on the first night and, and say, what do you want to talk about? And everybody would write it down and everybody would look at the cards and go, well, I want to talk about that. And you'd put a sticker on it. So the Would ones that got the most about, votes. Was it limited to a hundred people? hundred people back then. Yeah. We're yeah. going to probably keep this to 150. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so imagine a hundred people in one like, you know, conference room right. sitting there with post-it note type things, you know, writing down what their topic is. Right. They want to talk and about. then it's more of a discussion than it is presentation. Some people come with, you know, sort of, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of people that are coaches, you know, that kind right. of have a spiel, right? Like I did, but it's non-commercial. Yeah, it's not like we're we're pushing people, you know, buy this guy's book, buy this, you know, which is, by the way, something that I have a big problem with in our business right now. If you've only been doing it for a year, you're not qualified to teach other people how right. to do it. You know, I I spent, you know, twelve years in broadcasting and and have a degree in broadcasting. I know how all that stuff is. Everybody else is just guessing. Now they're getting online and going, trying to create a TV show or a, a podcast. Yeah, that's what I used to do. It was, it was the public service programming on Saturday and Sunday morning. <laughs> you know, intro, body, outro, boom. Put it on big reel of tape, put it on there on Sunday morning, hit the button and watch Sunday morning TV while that thing's running for half an hour. And then, wait, got to go to the next one. You know, that sort of thing. Uh <laughs> And that was that was my life for for a few years. Yeah. Uh, but uh, where was I going with that? What were we talking about? It's not important. That's what happens when <laughs> it's not important. But I do I do have a question for the chatbot. Oh, oh good. So here we go. I'm going to. And the question sh is: Shoo, show me the chatbot, would you? So this question came in from Justin. I think it was from Justin. Sorry, who was the one that said? Here's a question for the chatbot. Chris did. Chris Chris Walsh did. Okay. So here's hey, his Chris. question. All right, we're going to paste this into the chatbot together, kids, and watch what happens real time. So go to the chatbot, paste. And the question is? For the chatbot search, on which episode did Mark Cashman explain what to say to clients if they want to know what they are paying for? What did he say? <laughs> Look at that. Let's see, what, let's see what we get. So... Mark Cashman discussed what to say to clients if they want to know what they are paying for in VOBS episode 236. He mentioned that when giving clients a quote, it's important to itemize the three things they are buying before than just one. This approach helps clients understand the value of what they are purchasing and clarifies the breakdown of services provided. Boom. <laughs> Gold. Come on, guys. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty useful. It right? is. And then right below that, um, it says, where did this answer come from? And, and then there's, so- There's the video. There's references to the actual episode of when that was mentioned. Now, it's interesting. It shows four sources. Yeah. So I don't know how it derives which- Well, Mark was these... on the show a bunch of times, so- uh... Yeah, it does show multiple times when he was on the show. Um, but it says that this is uh, this was the best answer to that question. So, wow. guys, you have no idea how complex this is. I, I watched um, I watched the uh, a highlight reel yeah. of the Nvidia keynote. Ooh. Nvidia is the biggest company that you probably don't know about unless Graphics you're a cards unless you're a gaming nerd. Yeah. Or you don't know, but they are I think the second or third biggest most biggest company in the world. 
like right up there with Microsoft and Apple. Mm. And um, they are the ones that build the processors, the servers, the chips, all this stuff that makes stuff like this work. It's unbelievably complex. It, it just seems like a search engine. But what it's doing is it's searching through, in our case of this particular ch chatbot, the library, it's called the language model, mm -hmm. is built of uh, just shy of 10 million characters. And so it's mm -hmm. searching through all that, figuring out what's the most relevant way to come back to you with your, from your query with something useful that really makes sense, and then formulating a very well-written response. But what set, again, what sets this apart from just your generic chat GPT? By the way, I have a chat GPT account from OpenAI, and it's pretty freaking cool. I, I make a lot of chatbots. But this one is absolutely has guardrails. It will not, it will not hallucinate. No. If it can't find the answer that's relevant to your question, yeah. and it's not within the database, it will simply say, I don't have an answer yeah. for you. Refine your search a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Just come up with a bit different question because it's not going to make stuff up, kids. Yeah. And that's a really big deal about yeah. this. So How do you like that? Yeah, there's one. Maybe we can throw some more in there later if anybody yeah. else comes up with them. Are there any questions for me and Dan? That's the question. Well, we asked for them. There Let's should be some. in here. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Uh, we, well, while you're doing that, we, of course, we have to f f uh, thank uh, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff Holman, who Mr. is... Mr. Jeff Holman. Yeah, who's probably out there watching going, why can't I participate? Because, you know, we're just... This is a shoot in the breeze episode. Yeah. It's a very loose. Yeah. But he would, he would monitor our chat room. And, yes. And, uh, shout out, shout out to Jeff Holman. Yeah. Hollywood, Jeff Holman. Yeah. Yeah. Hollywood Holman. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you know, I can't remember his IMDB. It's probably still hidden on our, Oh, got a question on, on screen now. Yeah. So thanks, but, thanks Jeff. That was, you, yeah. you, you were, you were, a, you, it was a real help. You loyally helped us almost from the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. when we really needed it. Yeah, so yeah. thanks, Jeff. Man. So we had another question here. Yeah, this one uh, came from Lena Del Robo, which is actually a new name to me. Um, hey, guys, you're the best, and I've really enjoyed your shows. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, and thanks for everything. What are your thoughts on the Earthworks icon, Mike? It does, it does need, no, it says needs no interface. I found it on Sweetwater. Okay, so that must be the Earthworks icon USB. B mic, yeah. So they made two versions, the USB and the XLR. Um, I don't know, have any, I don't have any personal experience with that model, but I do have its brother. Okay. Called the Ethos. Oh, I remember you talking about The that. Earthworks Ethos. Right. And I have nothing but great things to say about the Ethos. It's been fantastic. Um, I have not used the USB variation of the icon, so I don't know, uh, I don't have anything specific to say about it. I would, I'm sure there's some good YouTube on the US, remember specifically the USB version because right. they make, you know, when you have a USB mic, it's going to have different quirks right? and we had different behaviors than an XLR mic. Right. You know? It may not have quite the gain that you'll have with an interface or stuff like that, but. Is it, yeah. I mean, is the self noise going to be as clear? Is there going to be more noise? Some, a lot of times these USB mics, they kind of cut corners on certain components to, right. to physically put them in the mic. And there's just, they're not always the most clear sounding. Right. Uh, there are devices. some good USB mics. I mean, we, you know, we know the, the Sennheiser the, makes one. Sennheiser makes a new one. MK4 digital. Digital. Yeah. It's and the Rode NT1 fifth gen. Fifth, right? Which is a, an amazing mic in and of the, a fabulous price point. Two, yeah. probably the best USB mics going. Yeah. They have a common thread between them is that they have zero Knobs, buttons, switches, or jacks. It's all software it's driven. Just a USB cable, right? right? So everything happens in the computer. There's no headphone jack, yeah. but they are uh, really good sounding USB mics. Yeah. But I, yeah, the, the, if you're really looking at Ethos, um, I mean, if you're really looking at Earthworks, check out the Ethos. Mm. Super impressive uh, mic that can easily do voiceover work as well as podcasting right. and broadcast stuff. Yeah. Then again, the, the, the bottom line on all of this is if it picks up your voice and it's a fairly good microphone, it probably doesn't matter. 
Whatever mic you have is the mic you have. It's this space around you that matters. It's, it's always, it's the acoustics. I've been and the enjoying, louder you talk, the more the acoustics come into play. I've been enjoying watching Dan tonight because Dan has been been like backing way off and all this stuff and talking, and it still sounds like he's right in front of the microphone. Right. Isn't that amazing? This is, this is the Harlan Hogan uh, VO1A, by the way. That's the classic right there. Yeah. And the reason... For that is this room's acoustics are very well done. Right. They're very, there's this whole wall behind us that's behind this green screen is one ginormous acoustic panel. Right. Actually, it's called the studio, studio suit. suit. Let, hey, let's show it here. This is a good oh, time to talk let's... about studio suit for, for a minute. A minute, because it's long gone. But there it is. <laughs> This is what's behind the green screen, everybody. If you've ever been one wondering what's back here. <laughs> but it works. Dude, so what is Studio Suit while we're talking about? So Studio, Studio Suit, Suit was something I found in a warehouse in Buffalo. Uh, somebody thought it was, they were tents, and this guy had bought an entire truckload of these things from some government surplus wasn't, thing. Wasn't it... Um, Quonset hut insulation. It was it was insulation for a Quonset hut. Like exactly. they would put these up in the in, in, in the you know, Arctic, out in the, in the right. field, right? And for then motor they would pool. have these huge rolls of this stuff, right? And they would right roll it out, you know. And 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 so this guy I knew who owned this where this Army Navy store was like, oh, I'm going to use this. People can soundproof their studios with it because that's the stuff you talk about. Like it's not soundproofing; it's sound dampening material. Yeah, it's dampening. Yeah, and it's it. We put it in people's closets. It was fa it was it. You didn't need a bass trap. It just sucked sound into it. And, you know, and I can talk right into it, and it, it doesn't bounce anywhere. It's incredibly absorptive. In fact, yeah. that one episode we were talking about where Dan is assembling a booth out of PVC <laughs> is actually using the studio suit. Yeah. He would hang it from PVC pipe, and it worked exceptionally well. Yeah. But it had a couple of little minor issues. Some of them had a little bit of a mildew Mil problem. Right. It, 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 it took a... Two or three bottles of Febreze to really get it smelling because they they were outside they were out in this pallet outside for ten years, <laughs> so they smelled like a Boy Scout tent. And that uh, is a very that is a very um, divisive odor. I don't know why for me, mildew smell doesn't bother me because no. it's like nostalgic. It's it reminds like, me of being in my parents' basement. Well, that's what I was gonna say. It's like, like weird Barbie. It's it smells of basement. Weird you know? Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh um, yeah, no, I, that smell was very nostalgic. It didn't bother me, but for many, for other folks, uh, yeah, maybe not the best choice in an enclosed room. Right. But, I, but um, they were, I, and the other problem was, was it was in these massive things. And oh, it was a cut, forty foot roll, and I had, had to, to cut, cut them, them into eight into foot sections, manageable piece, and that yeah. was not easy. Which is why I stopped doing it. But the and, people who have it, <laughs> and it's all still in a warehouse in Buffalo. No, I. I yeah, well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows where it is I, now? I, I don't know if Rob, what Rob did with it, but, you know. <laughs> that it, was studious. It came in these big 10-foot-long green cigars of canvas, green canvas bags. And uh, It's essentially loose yellow fiberglass in a yeah. canvas wrapper. Right. Is what it is. And it, and it works really well. <laughs> it works really well. But, and I still have a yeah, piece of, I think I've got a couple pieces sitting in the, in this, in the, in my voice booth over here. Yeah. There might be some still around. Well, there's somewhere on the store over here. Oh no, that's, that's, no, that's not, one of, that's, that's, that's one of the you panels made. I made. That's yeah. something you made. Yeah. All right. There was another question Sue had yeah. on the screen a minute ago. Let's see if we can grab to that one. She's scrolling, scrolling, <laughs> scrolling. Like, Dang scrolling, it, I had it on scrolling, screen. Scrolling. And you guys, uh, Patricia, hi, hey, Patricia. How would you prepare your voice for audiobook narration? Uh, Dan, since you don't do that anymore. You no, can't no. <laughs> yeah, I gave that up about 10 years ago. I mean, there's a lot of you guys out there doing audiobooks. While you while yeah. you come up with an answer, I'll search for it on our chat box. Yeah, you know, to me, audiobooks were always high effort, low reward. Uh, but, um, how do you prepare for, how do you prepare your voice for that? You warm up. I come out, come out here in the morning and go, eh, la, 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 I, I do scales. I, you know, you go, ah, oh, oh, do the vocal exercises to really loosen up your voice. Uh, but doing a long session of audio book, I mean, where you read an entire chapter, and, uh, you know, long form narration is physically exhausting. Can be, you know, I mean, it was, I mean, when I have to talk all day yeah. as not, not being a voice actor, 
I get physically tired and I can feel it in my throat. I feel how tired I am. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I was in really good shape back in those days and I, and I could, do, yeah, if you're in good physical condition mm -hmm. and I was working with a trainer back then and I was able to, uh, but the door swung open and a, and a fig Newton entered as Groucho Marx once said, uh, but you know, I, I it, you have to be in good physical condition. Really, to do voiceover, because there's so many people that try to read a sentence and take a breath every five seconds, you know. Right. You should be able to read an entire sentence without taking a breath. Look, Think about how much editing time you save just by doing that. But what did the chatbot come up with? It came up with a bullet list of stuff. <laughs> okay. Which is, you know, chatbots are really good at making lists. And by the way, I have been using my own personal George the Tech bot you know, my AI, George, for like a month and a half answering you guys' questions on Facebook and yeah. Reddit. I don't know how much you've, if you've seen answers from me that are remarkably well-written and verbose, yeah, possibly broken down into eight to 10 bullet points, yeah, it's probably my chatbot. Um, I've been using it a lot. But uh, the answer uh, is, it's eight points. Warm up your voice. And there, there's, you know, there's more details for each one of these, but warm up your voice, just like Dan said. Stay hydrated. Thank you for the reminder. Well, I forgot because I, I I don't stay hydrated. I'm, it's, I I don't drink at all. I mean I, I got to. I don't know how you do it. Water intake, but practice reading out loud. If this yep. is something new for you, understand the material you're reading. <laughs> Pretty what, important. It helps. Yeah. It really does help. Work on your breathing. Proper breathing technique. Very crucial. I'm just repeating what Dan said. See, look how look how relevant it's, this it's is. All up here. Create a comfortable <laughs> recording environment. Extremely important for audiobooks when you're going to be there for hours right. and hours recording. Um, rest your voice. Yeah. How how long would you go between breaks? How long did you know before you're like, I got to take a break? More than two hours? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I could do a chapter in an hour and I would stop. You would take a break. I'd take a break, have a drink, you know, and go back yeah. and go back at it. Okay. Although generally, what I, back in the back in the day, I would record and I would edit the chapter you like to it, do it as you go yeah I, I, you know, that would be my tendency yeah. I, I, I would be so like it would be so in my head that i just recorded <laughs> right and i would just be thinking i gotta edit it i gotta edit it. i gotta edit it. i gotta yeah. edit it i can't i can't let it go that right. would be me i would edit i'm, as I'm the way. same way you know yeah. drive, are you coming for lunch yeah i'll be there I in a couple minutes <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and the very last one which may be the most important bullet point of all is seek <laughs> feedback and training Listen to people, get advice from professionals. Yeah. Don't think you know everything. And just because you have a chatbot doesn't mean you're at, right. you have all the answers right. and get help because- yeah. Or uh, ask us, you know. Uh, get help, get yeah. help, get help. Yeah. <laughs> Great question. Yeah. So, but, and Cripes, we've been doing this all these years. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is the more you do it, the year, all the years that you and I have spent building home voiceover studios, yeah. very specifically- I mean, did we know everything when we started? No, of no, course we, not. I mean, what a, like, it's an old George Carlin joke. How do you start a path? You got to hold the grass down yourself at first. But, oh, that's a great line. Yeah. I remember that. Oh, well, Carlin had a bunch of them. Yeah. But, uh, but we learned, you know, yeah. the more experience. Nobody has as much experience at home studios as you and I do. I no, mean, this has been an absolute obsession for a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, everybody else is like, oh, here's how you be an engineer. You don't have to be an engineer. Yeah. You, you just got to learn Pro Tools. That's the industry standard. There's no new. Which industry are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, let's talk about which industry we're talking about. Right. right? You know, yeah. You're not a recording engineer. You're a voice actor. Your job is to capture your voice in the proper acoustical environment with the right levels. And now levels, now AI is controlling that stuff. Well, AI and 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 thirty two bit float, which is yeah. a topic I've been, <laughs> I have been teasing that I'm going to do a webinar or a video on thirty two bit float for a very long time, and it's time. So I'm going to be doing that soon because it it's it, the question keeps coming up more and more often, and I've got two perfect devices to test. I've got the Rode NT one fifth gen yeah. with the thirty two bit float USB ad converter magic sauce right and then i have a zoom uac 232 i think it's called yeah which is sort of like their scarlet 2i2 yeah. right it's an audio interface with no gain knobs oh it has zero yeah. gain knobs. the evo 4 is like that too well it, it will set a level it has a smart level smart that's level. a whole nother thing so yeah. smart level setting this is becoming more of a thing especially now the new scarlet 2i2 
fourth generation mm -hmm. came out. It has auto level and safe modes. Mm. I'm still dubious on the safe mode. I was watching all these YouTube videos was trying to get a better explanation. Basically a limiter or? That's what I don't understand. I don't know if it's a limiter where it, when you get to clipping like zero, it brings the level down for just a, for a moment and then back. Mm -hmm. Or if it drops it down and then leaves it down. Right. If it was me, the way I would want that feature to be is if you do get to clipping, that it would drop the level by, I don't know, let's say 6 dB, mm -hmm. just like that. And then for the duration of the entire rest of the project, it would be 6 down. Because then if you're editing the audio, you know the precise moment where the gain changed, right. and now you can just make your adjustment and post. Right. You just take the first half and drop it down by six. Boom, you're done. So I don't, I don't know. I, I the jury's still out on that. Right. Now, speaking of the Scarlet, you notice I didn't mention the Scarlet Solo. Right. Do not get the Scarlet Solo fourth generation because because channel one yeah is the guitar. Channel two is the is the mic. mic. Okay. They flipped it on us. And now, so if you're just trying to, to use just this, to mess with you, <laughs> oh, it's so irritating. Now, I mean, a lot of like zoom type programs just automatically hear both channels and it's a piece of cake but your daw isn't going to work that way so if you're just used to plugging in a mic to channel one hitting record you're going to get zero on your track unless you go into the settings switch the inputs now i know that sounds easy but trust me it's a pain in the neck when it's not the default right and so i really don't recommend the solo the 202 i2 fine the 4i4 has much more complicated software. If you're geeking out on making mix minuses and all this crap, go for it. Yeah, It's but, fun to be a geek. I mean, if you yeah. want to play with stuff, yeah. but you don't need it for doing voiceover. Catch it clean up front and, and you know, yeah, yeah. we've only been saying that for 13 years. And sure. Yeah, let's grab some more questions. John O'Rourke, of all the home studios you each have worked on, what ones were your favorites and why? Can you remember anything that you've worked on that just stands out? Oh, uh, let's see. What's the one that flashes to your brain immediately? Oh, some of the ones, you know, when you would go into these big expensive houses, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm suddenly in this mansion up in, in, you know, the Encino. You're in the gated part of the gated part? Right, exactly. The gate of the and, gated community? Yeah. I, you have to go in there and like, I'm here, you know, okay, you go in there. And you're suddenly in this very, very nice closet. <laughs> you know, and you see the kind of clothes people wear and, yeah. and that sort of thing. And that, I've done that many times. And you realize they have a they have a perfect booth already, right? It's because they have this huge closet. Right. There's clothing on maybe all four sides. If right. It's a big one, right? Right. And you put the mic in there. It's the one. I mean, we. I've done so many. It's the ones that look impossible, and you. Just to make a couple of little adjustments mm -hmm. you know, and it sounds good the way it is. Mm -hmm. Because as you always say, if it sounds good, it, it is, is good. good. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I won't mention any names, but, you know, there are a lot of places where I've, you know, they're a challenge. I go into a place and I sniff, as I like to say. All right. What does it sound like over here? Okay. All right. If you place yourself here, this is the sweet spot. Put the mic like this. And you know, I just, you know, rinse and repeat and mm -hmm. it, it, I always get it right because, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to overcomplicate it. I'll show people how to, how to edit properly. Um, but you know, there's just not one that was a favorite. I love doing all of them, you know, unless yeah. someone was a real pain in the ass, which, <laughs> which was very rare. It we're just a little rare. Looney Tunes. It's but, pretty rare. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're I, working with regular, we're working with people. Right. You know? Yeah. And, and, you know, and of course there were a lot more people trying to get into it who yeah. had no experience at recording. Right. So, right. you know, that's the fun part for me was, you know, quickly setting up, but then explaining the business to them. Yep. Like, I mean, you, I like, you know, I'm always making this joke. That's the, that's the extra special sauce of having one of us there physically with you or working with you. Right. There's so many other things that just flow out. Because we're just been in your, we've been in these environments so many times, and we right. find little things to improve or tweak. Exactly, or little tips, you know. Yeah, and uh, 
you know, trying to deal with background noise mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and I always said, well, you live where you choose to live. You know, <laughs> know if, if you're next a... to a construction site, you know, you're, oh, you're SOL. That, that, that reminds me <laughs> okay. of that one time. Okay. Actually, let me show you, I'll show you my favorite studio before we go on. My favorite studio to this day is still, is still this that one. one. Yeah, well, I, I've been in that one. Speaking of the impossible studio, right? Yeah. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's a freaking glass fish tank, right? Right. How can that possibly, how can that possibly work? The glass is all parallel. There's right. no slanty glass. Right. The room is basically a square. Right. You know, so it's glass, 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 square, big, huge countertop. And there's a glass window on the opposite side. Also perfectly parallel. Right. So every rule is broken in this right. space. Right. Why is the glass slanted, though, in most studios? There's Not two, for acoustical reasons. There's two, well, there's two reasons. What, one is no glare, so you can see through that's, the window. That's the bigger one. Like, I yeah. Mean, in radio studios, it was like, you know, okay, three, two, one. You know. <laughs> Try looking <laughs> through the door of your studio bricks or really any door glass door that has double layers of glass right. and all you see is yourself. Right. All you see is a reflection. Right. So that's one huge reason why the non-parallel glass is the norm. Um, it can help in a small booth too because the sound now reflects downward, you know, instead of right back at the mic, you know, right. but it's not necessary. And, and this is an example of that. Why does it work? Well, it works because mic placement is critical. We we have the acoustics all focused on one, one location where the mic is. The entire ceiling of the booth is one gigantic bass trap. Right. So there's no resonances or anything, the whole thing. And every square inch that isn't glass or wood has acoustical paneling on it. So um, it's I put that drape in there thinking, well, we're going to need a drape because it's going to reflect. Right. Nope. He never closes the drape. So this this one is a real favorite of mine. It's got stained glass in it because that window was already on the outside of the house. We're, right. we're like, what are we going to do with that glass mm -hmm. window? Well, we should frame it out. So, you know, this one's a favorite. But there you go. You can see where the two mics are located. He's yeah. he's facing right into a huge panel. It was a beautiful studio. Panel, you know? It really so, was. And that one's still, uh, that's Howard Parker. It's still in use today. And so, yeah, I, that's, that one's that always comes straight to mind when that yeah. question comes up. Yeah. It, it's always fun to see how people have already set up, you know, and then it's like, no, you, 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 you know, one, you're talking into the side of the mic Oof. <laughs> or you're, you're just, talking you, on the wrong side of the mic. Yeah. Let's demonstrate, demonstrate it every week. Yeah. Let's demonstrate <laughs> that. <laughs> Everybody know, needs to hear the wrong side of the mic. Right. Talk into the logo. Or if you got a road into the gold dot, not across it. You know, the gold something. dot, kids, yeah. the gold dot. You know, something just came to mind. Yeah. One one of my favorite shows that we did, well, actually I ended up doing it, was the one I did from Hershey. <laughs> the the Russian <laughs> talk amazing. show. You know, where I you know, I'm like, is anybody here a floor director at a TV set? Totally one guy says, I do that. Totally cable access. Yeah. yeah. And and, and we, we, we did it. It was all with analog cameras. And I had a yep. like one of those like switchers, handy, just like AD Sony, switchers. old Sony handy cams <laughs> with the RCA cables plugged into a Radio Shack right. TV switcher. Like, I want to watch the, I want to watch a VHS <laughs> click. <laughs> right. That was the switch. Right. You know, there was, the Genlock was a little late, but you know. <laughs> it, was it was a little was, flunky, but, but it worked. But it was fun. It was, you know, we're, I'm like, hey, I'm here at Fafcon. Here, let's talk to this person. And, oh God, that was a lot of fun. You know, again, it was there were no rules. It didn't matter. Yeah, we just went for it. I think, I think people need to start living their lives that way. It's like, well, yeah, there are rules. You know, you stop at a stop sign and, you know, things, you don't kill other people and things, but there are rules to this live streaming and doing a show. They, they just go There's with very it. few rules. As, as we've been doing for the last hour and 15 minutes here. Exactly. Exactly. But maybe, you know, do we have any more questions or? Uh, yeah, I know there's more in there. All right. Well, let's answer a few more. I'm changing the price on the chat button. Okay, way, good. By the end. This is the other thing. While we're doing this show, he's on the internet going, oh, oh God, I got to have something for tech talk. That's oh. why the laptop is always right in front of me. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a sec. I hear somebody at the door. Come on in. <laughs> there, problem, pro product, 
price changed. Excellent. It's Mishka, $10, come here. It's $10 come here, a sweetie. month. Now. Come here. You know, we've also had several dogs that have been in the studio. We had Ari all those years and Tink. Mm -hmm. but now we have Mishka. Mishka. <laughs> Mishka likes to lick microphones. <laughs> <laughs> lick the mic. Lick and it. why not? Lick it. Lick it. Yeah. Gonna lick the mic? Gonna lick the mic? Oh. Uh, 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 uh. Here's the question. Okay. Sue has a question from somebody. From Greg Hernandez. Hey, What's Greg. your favorite part of VOBS? Is it the interviews or the tech talk? Tech talk. <laughs> Tech talk, 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 tech talk. Yeah. No, I, I mean, it was, it was fun meeting some really cool people. Absolutely. I mean, we had, I mean, Fred Melamed in here, people who were, you know, fairly big stars. Yeah. Debbie Derryberry was always a pleasure to talk to, uh, and some of the cool people that we've met. And it was interesting, you know, when they would come and they would be in my house and they'd come here and they'd sit here and I'd get to look up their nostrils and everything. It was, it was kind of cool, but. You and I just shooting the poop here about yeah. all this stuff because it's I mean so clearly much fun. we've had some the highlights are pretty obvious and we've talked about them a lot like June Foray coming into the studio yeah I mean, he was passed on by now and just her live interaction with Dan and, yeah. and just she was ama amazing we yeah um, gosh I mean. You know, and, and we had some great coaches on too. I mean, uh, so many great coaches. You know, Dave Walsh, who was always fun to have on, yep. and Mark Cashman, and uh, and John Bailey. I mean, it's <laughs> we've had some friends of the shows over the year. John Taylor, John Taylor, where where is John? He's I'm, out in he's out in um, Palm Ox Springs. Oh, he's in Palm Springs. Yeah, he's okay. loving his life in Palm Springs. Good for him. Um, John, John, search for any episode with, with John, John Taylor, Taylor, yeah, and you will laugh. Um, but he, John Bailey became another friend of the show. Yeah. I just, if, if we were like, dang it, so-and-so got booked. Yeah. Call John. See if John, John Bailey do it. And he would write back, who canceled? <laughs> and we so, bring him in. John Bailey is fantastic guest. Yeah. If, if you go to the chatbot, that's a picture of John in the middle of the, the guy in the middle is John. He doesn't look anything like that now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and Scott Parkin. Yeah, we had some fun times with Scott Parkin because he would yes. always bring a bottle of rum. Oh yeah, who 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 were the who were the uh, the guests we had that would, that would bring booze? It was it was Scott. Yeah, and it was Compost Productions. Oh oh um yeah. Uh, oh no. <laughs> This I'm going to have to use the chat bot. I'm going to have to use the Bill chat Holmes. Bot. Bill Holmes. Sorry, Bill. <laughs> it, 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 it came, it was in back in the back of my mind. There Sorry, somewhere. Bill. Bill Holmes. Those Bill two Holmes. guys would show up to the studio, usually with shots. Yes. And so within the first hour, we oh. were getting a little bit schnocker <laughs> and getting pretty, pretty, pretty loose on the mic. Yeah. Yeah. That those, those were fun shows. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was just fun. If it wasn't fun, we wouldn't do it. Yeah. You know, and, and when it became more. It still was fun, but there oh, was still I mean, more the labor of it, of, yeah. of the grind of it. Well, you know, and, and, but the, but the, you're not chain. shoveling snow. No, it's not. And it's not mining coal. No, it's not. <laughs> Although there is a certain pleasure to <laughs> shoveling snow. Like, well, I'm okay. proud of this driveway. It starts snowing again. It's like, <laughs> but, uh, well, we didn't have the snow. Well, we had the snow, but it was for us. It was the leaves. Right. Should we wait till all the leaves fall out of the trees before right. we start cleaning up the leaves? Right. Yeah, and then and then there were the tip of t my tips of the week, which were yeah. well planned out productions. We got we got to do packages. Oh yeah, can't just be our talking for hours. Pre recorded packages. Yeah, and, and those are those are still on the internet. Those are on. Uh, I think those are still on the VOBS website and you know, you can type in tip of the week and it'll give you all the different tips of the week that yeah. I made. Uh, Chris Anthony Lansdowne. Thank you for speaking oh, up. The voice of she Barbie. She said we had Barbie. Of <laughs> course we had Barbie. Thanks, Chris. Yes, yeah. we had the voice of Barbie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, where else can you, the funny thing was, is people would, I would recognize me places. I'm sure it happened to you too. I'm walking down the street in Pebble Beach or in uh, Carmel by the Sea. People don't recognize me because I'm usually wearing a helmet and yeah. I'm on a bike going uh, 15, 20 miles right. an hour. <laughs> I'm walking down the street. My my son had just graduated from from uh, Middlebury College in in uh, uh, Ventura, and 
no, not in Ventura, up in, up in the, the, the Monterey Bay, mm-hmm. upper Monterey. And, uh, so we went into, uh, Carmel by the sea, which is a beautiful little town. Absolutely. Yeah. And this guy's standing on the corner. I'm walking by there with my mom and he goes, aren't you Dan Leonard? I'm like, yes, uh, I watch your show. I'm like, great. My mother was very impressed, <laughs> you know? Uh, it happened in a subway a couple of times, you know, people see the mustache and they were like, oh, you're, you're the guy that has that show on voiceover. <laughs> so clearly we were, we were doing pretty well. And then people would send me mustache stuff. There was so much mustache stuff. What? Who? Huh? I was trying to get her attention without getting distracting you, but it didn't oh, work. And no, well, you're going like <laughs> this. I mean, what? <laughs> no, I just want to make sure Sue, Sue had to go at some point. Oh, okay, yeah. At some point. At some point. Well, okay, we'll, okay. we'll finish up in five minutes here. Five or ten minutes. Do you want yeah. to run all the best wishes? Oh, sure. yeah. Sure. We have best wishes from people? We do. I got to let Mishka out. All right, you let that. Hey, Bonnie. That's my cousin, Bonnie, in Pennsylvania. She's just a little older than me, and she was my one of my best pals growing up. Hey, Bonnie, thanks for saying that. Trey, Mr. Trey, Trey Kendrick Mosley, who has his own podcast. On All his right. Own. Good to see you, fellas, says Trey. Alicia Hurley says, where can we find new tech talk? I like all the new gadgets George talks about. Well, I guess moving forward, I guess my other show now, the Pro Audio Suite, it's probably the place to go because that's where I'm releasing new content and you know, so yeah, check that out. It's a very different vibe. Um, definitely more geeky. Um, but yeah, it's called the Pro Audio Suite and we release stuff every week. So that's one place to go. Um, Paul Sager, uh, thanks for everything you too. Thanks for saying that. Thanks, Paul. Paul. Yeah. Oh man. Justin Rama says, Yes, thank you, Jack. I watched all of EWABs and thanks to him I was able to take notes easier. So he's thinking Jack DeGalia for doing yeah. all the Thanks, manually written show notes. Right. Which is things that just aren't going to be happening anymore because of AI. Um, Joan Covino says, thanks for sharing your expertise, humor, and insight over the years. Thanks, Joan. Yeah. We recognize a lot of names, but that one I didn't remember. Yeah. Umberto. Umberto Franco, Franco. in uh, in <laughs> Portugal. It's 3 a.m. and he's watching live from Portugal. You rock, Umberto. You do. Oh. I mean, also, I know that he works like Pacific time hours because that's, that's where true. all the clients are. Yeah. But yeah. thanks, Umberto. He's an interesting guy because I- He's I, so great. Yeah, it's like, well, it, it, you know, you speak- Because he's in Portugal. He speaks he's Portuguese. Portuguese. He's, he's Portuguese. And I, and I once said, oh, so you can, you, could do, you could do stuff in, in Brazil. He goes, they don't speak Portuguese in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> At some at some other language. <laughs> well, that's like saying that you speak Spanish, but you're from Mexico versus from Spain. I mean, you know, these are very different dialects. Right. But yeah, you can understand it. Right. Um, Bill Hepburn says, thank you. I've immensely valued listening to the two of you over the past 18 months. And as I've started my, and as I've started my VO journey, so much learning, so much more to learn. Hashtag thankful. All right. Thank you. Eddie, Mr. All Eddie. Caps. <laughs> Eddie. Sure hate to see you two masters go. Thanks for everything. Thanks, Eddie. Yeah. You, you are a great supporter of the show. And Sue, too. <laughs> Thank you, too, Sue. <laughs> By the way, the desk that Sue's sitting at is thanks to Eddie. Yeah. Eddie found this desk at Costco. He's like, he had one. He's like, I got to get one for the show. He said, you guys want to get one of these? He's like, I want to get you this desk. We, could, like, we couldn't say could, no. We he, couldn't say no. He showed up and he brought this <laughs> freaking super cool electric lift desk. Yep. In the studio, five roughly five years ago, and it's yep. been here ever since. Thanks, yep. thanks. It's Eddie. moved around yeah. a little bit, but you know. It's... Thanks, Eddie. You're awesome. Uh, Larry Hudson, our old buddy. Larry, I'm over here all by myself, laughing and laughing hysterically out loud. You guys have created an amazing legacy of greatness. Yeah, man, that means a lot, Larry. Yeah. Larry lives up in the mountains, up in Wrightwood. Yeah, he's way up. It's you know, ten foot of snow up there. I mean, it, they really get to stay an hour from here, and suddenly there's you know all that snow. Yeah, man. Yeah, we love Larry. Larry. Larry by the way, Larry. Again, I was mentioning here. Larry was the one that told me, "You got to move out to California. You're gonna love it here." Yeah, that so. was that Larry. That Larry. <laughs> Um, Diana Costello Merritt. Oh wow, oh, Diana. We go back. Oh geez, good times. Love y'all. Nice Buffalo gal. And, yeah, I remember hanging out with her at um, Fafcon. Yeah, it's probably via Atlanta Fafcon that kind of yeah. thing. We 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 miss you. I we haven't talked in a long time. Did she have the ta- temporary tattoos? 
I don't know. I feel like she had temporary tattoos, and we were sticking on everybody and laughing. Our oh, I, that might have that might have been going on at one of those conferences. But speaking I, of stickers, not to get you know, not to get oh, know, but there's a sticker on the back of that mic. I'm gonna mute it for a second while you while you take it out of there. But there's a very special sticker on the back of Dan's mic that I know will be very hard hard to show on oh, frame, but. We, we had this tradition in, in, in Movo. There's uh, this guy, Pat Sweeney, who is a you know big fan of our show. Uh, a, 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 one of those people, he was like my grandmother. Every, he had a different relationship with everybody, and everybody loved him because he was just a super-duper guy. And, you know, when, and he, he passed on, and... Uh, so we have this thing, you know, he used to say, I'm going to, you know, you're going to give, you gave somebody a golden nugget and we'd give them a slap on the back. And we came yeah. up with these stickers that say a pat on the back. Yeah. And, and that's, that's his testament. And, uh, boy, we miss you. Yeah. God, he was such a, we nice miss guy. you, Pat. Yeah. There, there's so many great people. I don't want to get into a list of people we've lost cause I can't hold it together. I'm not a professional. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> there have been quite a few that we've lost over the years that have been our clients and friends of the show and all this stuff. And Pat, I'll never forget you. And I'm glad you have that sticker on your mic because it'll, it'll it always remember. That, you know, to, you know, always give out, give out advice. And I know you like looking at Pat, but Pat's on the back of the mic. Oh, I know. <laughs> Kids, that's the back of the. That's at the well, back. I, of the well, I'm talking on the wrong side here, aren't I? There okay, go. there we go. Now I'm in the right side. There okay. you go. Anyway, that's what the back of the mic sounds yeah. like. Well, it's Lee nine o'clock here in California. Love you, Lee. Lee. Hey. Oh, By the way, and whenever, Lee Penny. Whenever we say for Lee Penny for being Lee Penny, there's Lee, Lee. Lee was a very early on supporter of our show as well. Yep. Coming into the studio, helping us with some tech stuff early on. Um, big time support of our show. Thanks, Lee, for being yeah. there all these years. Um, God, it's been a blast. It's been a blast. Yeah. So I guess that's going to wrap it up. It's going to wrap it up. If you want to <laughs> eternally, I know, I'm getting a little verklempt. <laughs> um, <laughs> talk amongst yourselves. We'll have some coffee and we'll talk. Uh, it's been a great time. And uh, we're going to be continuing to do things just in different formats and different ways. But if you want to keep tapping into our knowledge, VOBS.TV, and you'll access our, our chatbot. Our chatbot there for now $10. For $10 a month, 14 days free trial. Play with it. Test it. And if it works well. And by the way, Dan, you're going to be giving this chatbot to some supporters of our show. Yes. And to... Wovo members. Wovo members. So if you are a Wovo member, World Voices member in good standing, you're going to get access to the chatbot for free. Yep. And everybody who are making repeat subscription support of our show. So who are sending us money, like like on PBS, on send in your dollars. People would send us money and it, it, it helped with the equipment and all those things. And we were... I, and people did it for years and years and yeah. we really appreciate we're gonna, it. So. We're going to find a way to give you guys access to the chat bot too. Yeah. So use it, enjoy it, share it, tell people about it. And uh, we want to keep helping people for years to come. This yeah. way. So I, I guess that'll put a wrap on it. That'll do it, man. And uh, always a pleasure. Fortunately, we live in the same town. We can still have lunch. Of course. Yeah. But, but we have to go to Chicago to WovoCon. Oh, yes. Because that's the only thing. That's how it works. The only time you see people from LA is when you go to a conference it's another, somewhere else, yeah. another city. Yeah, you, you try to get together with people in LA. It's almost impossible. It's it, almost it, impossible. I got to cancel. I can't come. You're like, yeah. <laughs> see, everybody knows that. You know, it's right. it's, it's it's very hard to make friends here. Yeah, everybody has to. You know, it's it's a discipline. It is. You know, uh, is. you know, making friends and keeping friends and being friends and. And being friends means giving and, you know, and, and I think everybody needs to learn that and, and do that. Some people are better at it than others. And, but when you have friends, it makes the world a much nicer place. Absolutely, man. You know, thank you. And it's always been a pleasure working with you doing this show. <laughs> Who would have thought that we'd be doing it for 13 years? I know. And Sue, <laughs> thanks for hanging and in with Sue, us for yeah. so long. I mean, you've been our longest continuous you know, uh, director. technical director and you know gosh seven, seven, seven years. years you've taken off so much stress <laughs> off our shoulders <laughs> yeah. doing this um, a lot, though. I definitely I feel like I could 
someone how to set up their, uh, their audio. <laughs> yeah, no, I oh, mean, hey. Sue is Sue's an incredibly versatile person. She has so many skills. You guys Sue, what's your email address? My can email? I, can I plug your email? <laughs> I'll put it up really quick. Sue at, at gmail.com. Gmail dot com. Right. If you need her for anything production, podcasting, live streaming, setting up your studio, setting up your lighting properly. Yeah, she knows that stuff. She's brilliant. Yes. But, you know, I we're still in business. you got George the Tech. I'm still the home studio master. And... You know, you can send your stuff into my specimen collection box. And VOBS or, fan 10 off coupon code. I think it still works yeah. on my website. Oh, good. If it uh, doesn't, tell me and I'll fix it. But Exactly. It should still work 10% off. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's what we love to do is teach people how to do it right. Because if somebody sounds bad, it makes everybody sound bad. But if it sounds good. It is good. By the way, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this has been VoiceOver Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Thanks, everybody. You've been wonderful. Thanks, everybody. Big heart.